All right, so we have Ashlyn tonight to uh, introduce our speaker for us. I would like to introduce Stephanie Murray to speak tonight. Stephanie, Stephanie lives in Rhombus Hosting, where she farms with her husband, Cameron, and her parents and her sister. Rhombus Hostings is a three-time master breeding herd. They milk about 50 cows, and they are known for breeding a long-lasting, high type and producing cows. Rhombus has many all Ontario, all Canadian, all American winners. Rhombus also has many local shows and many larger shows. And Stephanie does a great job, great job leading her herd. Stephanie is also a great judge. She judges many shows across the country. She judges, she has judged at the World Dairy Expo and she is and she judged showmanship at TD 4-H Classic three years ago. She is known for one of the best showmanship shows around, and I'm lucky to have her a chance to learn from her. Welcome, Stephanie, to our meeting. All right, welcome, Steph. Over to you. Great. Thanks very much, Ashlyn, for the introduction. And thank you to Jen and Brianne uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak to all of you youth here this evening. I think this is a great way, while you're not able to meet in person with your 4-H clubs, uh, to still be learning and gathering together, picking up tips uh, from those within the industry and also sharing your great ideas with one another. And I certainly heard those uh, through your answers to your roll call here this evening. Lots of great comments on what to look for uh, in your showmanship uh, at all times. So uh, we'll get into a presentation here I've put together a bit of a slideshow that we'll follow through and we'll also use um, some YouTube clips from 2017, the year that I judged at the TD Classic, as some examples uh, that will help us as we move through. So just getting started here, I'd like to start with a couple uh, general comments in regards to showmanship. So showmanship, it's not just arriving at your achievement day, uh, for your showmanship class or your confirmation class. Showmanship starts the very first day that you're picking your calf. You're building that bond with your calf. You're gonna start to train her. You're gonna be feeding her to care for her. You're gonna wash her to keep her clean and you're gonna be working hard with her and committed to that hard work training your calf, no matter what level you're hoping to compete at through your 4-H year. Showmanship's about knowing your animal knowing her faults and able to correct those faults at natural ease. Showmanship's not about being robotic when you're correcting your faults. It's about being able to take a hold of any animal, realizing what you need to do to make her look her best at all times. So just a quick overview of uh, what we're gonna cover here this evening. And it might be best if at the end of each main topic, if we wanna have a question period, and that way, uh, while the questions are fresh in your mind, you can ask them. And then of course, at the end, we can do more questions as well. I want this evening to be all about what you're looking to learn. Uh, so don't be afraid to ask any question as we move through. So starting with dress code. Uh, dress code, a uh, nice, white, clean pair of jeans that go over your boots, as you will see in the photo here of this young leads person a white collared button up shirt. And if it is in the summer and it's really hot, a polo shirt with a collar uh, that looks very professional is also acceptable. At the end of the day, you wanna be looking professional and clean when you're entering that ring. Um, I don't see a lot of it anymore, but there was a period of time we were seeing a lot of glitter on belts or bling as we would call it. So just make sure you have a nice plain brown or black belt along with your boots, uh, brown or black hard soled boots, one to keep your feet safe, uh, but it also looks very professional as well. So no running shoes. I know there's a lot of twisted X's out there that have uh, some color patterns on them. I would also suggest staying away from uh, any shoes of those type. For anyone that has long hair, uh, keeping that hair out of your face so that it's easy uh, for you to make eye contact with the judge, which I heard that from a number of you during your roll call here this evening. And it also gives the judge a clear view of you as well. I also heard through the roll call, no chewing gum. Um, if we look at our discrimination scorecard, that is a serious discrimination as well. So 
that's just an overview of the dress code that uh, we are uh, liking to see when you're entering the ring. So any questions on dress code? So if you have a question for Steph, you can type it into the chat box and we can uh, read it out for you or you can just unmute yourself and ask her directly. We have a question here. Um, why do you have to wear white when you go into the ring? That's a great question. Um, white has been the standard uniform, we'll call it, for showing uh, since I was a little girl as well. So that's just what we've learned to adapt to, to wear completely white uh, when we're leaving. But great question. So if I'm not hearing any others, we will continue on. So we're now at the show and we're about to enter the ring. So as I heard a number of you saying here this evening, that first impression when you're walking into the ring means a lot. You wanna be looking professional. You wanna look calm, but with confidence and good posture as you're entering the ring. When we're walking into the ring, we're walking forwards, moving in unison with our calf. And I did hear that commented several times in your roll call. Moving in unison means your feet are moving at the same time as your heifer's front feet are. Leading with your left hand as you're walking into the ring and using that right hand to help in holding the throat of the calf. When you're coming into the ring, if you've had a calf that's maybe a little full of energy as you're entering, the judge will give you that second chance throughout the class. As we all realize, sometimes going into a new environment, calves get a little scared they start pushing or acting up, and maybe they weren't doing that at home. So I do suggest if you're able to get into the ring ahead of time, it's always a good idea to take your calf in there with a couple other calves, let the calf become familiar of the surroundings, and then hopefully they are a lot calmer and you can come into that ring at a nice calm pace with lots of control of your calf. Making eye contact with the judge as you're entering the ring, with an, not a fake smile, but a nice smile. Make it look like you want to be there, that you're happy to be in the ring, showing your calf off, you're happy to be at the show. And it's all about having fun too at the end of the day. I did hear uh, one of the members comment about don't, showing, don't show up late for the class. That is a big no-no. Make sure that you are there on time. It's better to be there early and that way, as the class is entering the ring, everyone will be able to get the proper spacing and not have to worry about someone trying to fit into a space later on in the class. So I'm just gonna flip over to a short YouTube clip. Oops, sorry. Sorry, that one's just not loading. So we'll, there's lots more that we're gonna look at here this evening. So we will carry on. So is there any other questions on entering the ring? Hearing none, then we'll move forward. So we're in the ring now and we're looking at spacing. So the ideal rule of thumb uh, to remember for spacing is it's approximately your calf length between the nose of your calf and the back end of the calf in front of you. Another uh, figure to use is approximately five feet. So five feet between the front of the calf, your front of the calf, the back end of the calf in front of you, and five feet from the side wall to the side of your calf as well. We'll talk about a couple different shows that you potentially would be at. So your achievement day, for example, the class size may not be quite as big. Therefore, you may want to leave a little bit of extra space to help fill the ring up as long as the spacing is uniform amongst the whole class. You start moving to a larger show, such as the TD Classic, which many of you have shown at. There's a lot more in that ring. So the spacing may not be that five feet. It may only be three feet or four feet for everyone to fit in. But the key is making sure that you're giving yourself enough room that if your calf is gonna act up, you have enough space without pushing into the calf in front of you. It also allows you to stand out in the class if you're not bunched in with several other calves around you. So by you controlling the space ahead of you, you should never get into that position where you get lost in the ring because you're tucked behind a calf that's in front of you. 
What happens if you end up that you have no space left in front of you? If the whole ring has been stopped, when the judge asks the ring to move again, just take a few baby steps so that you're moving a little bit slower than you normally would to allow that space to reoccur again so that you have enough space around you. What happens if the competitor behind you is pushing into the back end of your calf? You can very kindly ask them just to leave a little more space between themselves and your calf. But do that very politely, and that's all about sportsmanship, which we will talk to later on here this evening. And the judge will realize that if it's the calf behind you pushing into your calf, that it's not your fault. It's the control of the calf by the competitor behind you. So you will not be faulted for that. However, if you are the show person and pushing into the calf ahead of you, then that will be looked at when the judge is evaluating for their placings. So you've been asked to stop on the outside of the ring. Try your best not to get stopped in a corner. If you get stopped in a corner, sometimes it's very uncontrollable just based on class sizes. It is hard to get your calf set up correctly at times because you're on an angle, you're not able to get your calf as straight. So if you see that you're going to be getting close to a corner and you're thinking the judge is probably getting close to stopping you, just slow your pace down ever so slightly so that you don't end up on the corner. And when we talk about individual inspection in more detail, as a judge, we will not do our individual inspections when in the corner because calves, as I mentioned before, generally do not behave as well when they're in the corner. And it's hard for you to get the calf to be nice and straight as we like to see. So when we're also talking about spacing, there's spacing between you and your calf. So we don't wanna see a show person tucked in behind the head of the calf that we're not able to see your face when you're leading. We like to see you just out in front of your calf enough so that your arms are bent ever so slightly. And there's a photo coming up here to illustrate this so that your arm is flowing from your calf's nose to your elbow at a comfortable position. And we have a nice photo here on the next slide that will illustrate that. So is there any questions on spacing? So Steph, we have one in the chat. And uh, the question is, if you are showing outside, and have to stop on a hill, what would you do? That's a great question. And that's bound to happen, especially at a lot of our achievement days. So one, hopefully that won't happen to you that the organizing committee has picked a nice flat spot. But if that does happen and you're stuck on a hill, there's not a lot that you can do about it, but the judge will realize that that part was out of your control. However, if it's a short hill and you realize that you can speed up a little bit so that you can get up onto the flat if there's enough spacing. That's what I would suggest you do. One, it's gonna be more comfortable for your calf to stand for you. And also if the judge is coming to do an individual inspection for you, a lot easier to do your feet switch if you can just get to the top of the hill with enough spacing. If the calf is stuck going up the hill, it will likely be a challenge to get her to do her feet switch nice and smoothly for you because she's likely going to want to take a big stretch going up there. We've got another question in our house um, and some of the kids who have shown at the classic will, will can maybe relate to this and we all love the ring man that we have at the classic. He's well known to many of us and he's a good friend of ours um, but some of the kids have mentioned that um, they get asked to keep moving by the ring man when they would prefer to stop um, and, and do some of the, the as things you just said. What's your advice on that one? So on that comment in showmanship uh, in particular, showmanship is following the judge's orders. And if the judge has asked you to move, or to stop. So my advice would be if the judge has specifically told you to stop, that you say stop, or the opposite if they've asked you to move, that you continue moving. Confirmation on the other hand, that's a different story. If you've been asked by the ring person in confirmation to move, you take their commands and move along because they're trying to make sure that ring's being used as best as possible. But in showmanship, 
the judge wants to be able to see that you are following the instructions and know the proper spacing, for example, to have. So I would just listen to what the judge's commands are. So Steph, two more questions here. Uh, I'll do the one about the, there's a, a follow-up to the Hill question. So is it all right to tell the judge you're on the Hill? I don't see any problem with doing that. Um, the judge is most likely going to realize that you are on a bit of a hill, but you can maybe mention if it doesn't, your switch doesn't go so well with your feet, if you could do it when you're on a flatter location. And I think all judges will always give a competitor a second chance if they realize maybe the calf has acted up on them and they get the calf under control, they will most likely come back and do another individual inspection or like this on the hill situation, the judge will likely realize that it's not an ideal spot and come back if needed. Because at the end of the day, it's about being as fair as we can to all the competitors. And if that means a second look, then a second look will happen. And the other question here, Stephanie, is uh, what do you do when the calf ahead is not walking or is walking way too slow? Great question. So that's something we'll touch on in sportsmanship as well. If the calf is not moving because the competitor is having trouble getting the calf to move, she's balking a lot, then as a show person, it is okay to give that calf a little push. That's helping someone else out in the ring, and that's all about sportsmanship. If it continues on, most likely there will be a ring person that will come along and help get that calf moving. And if that calf continues not to move, the competitor behind, all you can do is make sure your heifer is looking her best at all times. So if you've tried to help get the calf to move and it's still not working, make sure your calf is set up correctly so that the judge is getting a good look all the time because as we've mentioned before, showmanship is about making sure that calf looks her best at all times. Great, so if I don't hear any other questions, we will continue on to the individual inspection component. So when we're doing an individual inspection, this is when we're really looking at fine details of the competitor. And as we mentioned before about spacing between you and your calf, this picture illustrates it quite well. This competitor is in a position where they're elbow is down below the calf's nose. They're in front of the calf that we can see this competitor well. So we've ticked that off the box of what we're looking for. The next thing we're gonna look at is a properly fitted halter. We wanna see a halter that's approximately halfway up between the muzzle of the calf and her eyes. We wanna see the snap that's on the show side so that it's flipped the appropriate way, not flipped backwards. And the reason being is when it's flipped backwards, that tends to irritate the calf on her jaw. So you want to make sure the staff is positioned the correct way. And that's one thing as a judge, I noticed that a lot of competitors forget to double check that on their halter. So if you're thinking of a few things right before you go in the ring, this is definitely one area that you want to look at. You want good head carriage on your calf. That's illustrated here in this photo as well. And that comes back to the positioning of you and your calf and that that elbow has a nice bend in it flowing from the nose of the calf. So it's keeping her nose positioned correctly. If your calf's nose gets too high up in the air, what that does is it will create her to potentially go weak in her loin and high in her pins so and shorter in her neck. And therefore it's not giving us the best look at her possible. So as the judge is moving about uh, for the individual inspection, they're coming from the center of the ring towards the calf. You're gonna ever so slightly turn that calf's head towards the inside of the ring. If your calf has a lot of throat, you're gonna continue holding the throat on your calf at this point. However, if she does not, you're gonna drop your hand to the point of shoulder. And that way, you're gonna start giving your calf a little bit more control as the judge is moving about. The judge now comes to the back end of the calf and you want to ensure that that calf is straight from her nose to her tail head, straight across that top line. When the judge now moves to the non-show side, you're going to want to take that nice half step ahead and ideally the front feet on your calf are not going to move. 
The front feet are gonna stay in a square position and only the back feet will move. There'll likely be a question about, can I move my calf backwards to do my feet switch? I always say to every competitor, take your calf ahead that half a step. That allows if your calf doesn't do that feet switch 100%, then it's a lot easier to get your calf repositioned correctly, keeping her heart on top, as opposed to pushing her backwards. If she doesn't cooperate, your calf may not look the best. And I find that calf can be trained 120% to do that feet switch backwards, but if it doesn't work, then it's very hard to get that calf repositioned correctly. So always take your calf ahead half a step. The judge is now moving towards the front of the calf. So at that point, if your hand is not already on her point of shoulder, drop your right hand to the calf's point of shoulder. This is gonna keep your calf stable. And as the judge is walking about the front, you're following with your calf's nose and making eye contact with the judge at that time. This is the time when you really wanna show the judge that you're there and you wanna win. You're making eye contact, you're looking happy, but you're doing it professionally and confident. So the judges now move back to the center of the ring. And at this point in time, you're taking that calf ahead another half a step to reposition it so the rear leg closest to the judge is furthest back and ensuring that those front feet on the calf are square. I'm gonna try the YouTube video here again of an individual inspection because sometimes at a bigger show, if there's heat, there will be an individual inspection done, but then when you get to the finals, potentially a group of four or five calves will be worked together just to help with timing and to speed the show up a little bit. So I'm going to switch over to the YouTube here. So Steph, while you're doing that, uh, yeah. if you can uh, answer and, and work with your computer at the same time, there's a question about um, what your thoughts are on taped halter leads. So absolutely not. Um, ideally, How did I know you were going to say that? <laughs> <laughs> you know me too well, Jen. Ideally for your lead strap, you want to have it so that it's rolled up in a loop of just three uh, small loops. So your hand fits nicely in there. The reason I say do not tape your lead strap too is if your calf ever got excited and started jumping around or tried to get away from you, it's going to be very hard to keep control of that calf with your hand on a tape lead strap that's much shorter. Now if you would like to tape, if on your halter and your adjusting strap is a little too long, some black electrical tape on that is okay, but I do suggest finding one that fits properly that you don't need to do that. Is there any other questions? There is one more here. Um, I might need to get a bit of clarification, but it's asking about whether you, if you can talk a little bit more about halters that are too high or too low. Okay, so a halter, if it's too high and it's riding up in the calf's eye, that's gonna be very uncomfortable for her. And she's most likely not gonna flow as nicely with you and cooperate as nicely with you. If you get into a position where the halter's too loose on the calf, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to have control of the calf. And if it starts riding too low down the nose, potentially the calf could slip out of that halter easily. And that's it so far for questions in the chat box. So okay, we can pop over to the video. So here you see that we're working with a group of three or four at a time. And the leads person there was facing the judge as the judge was walking towards them. They took their calf ahead that half a step. And then as soon as the judge came back in, they then moved that calf forward again as the judge was asking them to move. So we'll just switch back here.
So any other questions on individual inspection? So we'll move on to lineup. So lineup, the judge's motion for you to come into line. You're going to turn and walk forwards with your calf, still holding your calf in the left hand, using your right hand on the throat. When you pull into line, you want to ensure that there's approximately a half a calf width between you and the calf in front of you. It's going to give you enough time to get in between the two calves if you need to fix the tail head on your calf, if you need to correct your calf in the loin, whatever you may need to do with your calf, you then have enough space to do that comfortably and not bumping into the calf ahead of you. When you're in line, say you're pulled in second, third, fourth or fifth or onwards, you want to always ensure that the front feet on your calf are lined up with the front feet on the calf in first. So it gets a little challenging sometimes when we have big junior yearlings with smaller March calves or December calves. But just remember, rule of thumb, always look at where the first place calves front feet are and that's your guideline for where your front feet need to be. When you're in line and you have your calf set up correctly and she's looking her best, at that point, drop your hand to the point of your calf's shoulder and it's gonna help steady her and keep her calm in line. When we're talking about the rear positioning of the back feet, if you're in first, as you see on the photo on the right, that the calf's leg on the outside closest to the judge is positioned furthest back. And just like on the outside of the ring, you only want approximately an inch or two between those two feet because the more the feet are tucked underneath the calf, it's gonna make her look complete all the time. If you're placed in second or onwards, you can position the rear legs on your calf whatever way will make her look the best. And I usually say most times it's still keeping the feet positioned with that her right leg position the furthest back will make your heifer look the best. So when the judge is moving about the lineup, as the judge is inspecting you from the back, you're positioned as the leads people are in the photo on the left. The judge then moves towards the front. When the judge gets to where that first place person is standing, all the competitors will turn around so that you're facing the judge and you're following the judge with your calf's head from a comfortable position. And from a comfortable position, that means not having to move your feet with the calf's head. So you're doing it all from one central location and following along. If your calf has a lot of throat, and the judge gets further down the line and is looking back and can see your calf, I recommend that you pick the throat of your heifer up at that point. Because as we always say, showmanship is about making that calf look the best at all times. So a throaty calf does need that throat held when the judge can view her from the side. And some may be able to hold that throat with their left hand that's holding the lead shank as well by using just their pinky finger but a lot of times it's very difficult to do that. So I suggest pulling your right hand up, holding the throat on the calf when the judge is viewing her from the side and then repositioning to the point of shoulder to give you a little more control once the judge has passed. So stuff, a few questions. Um, sure. Maybe I'll throw them in here. Uh, so I'll go through the two in the chat box and then Emma will come to you for your question. So the first one is if you're in second and the first place person um, has to move their calf forward, should you go forward to match them? Or should you adjust to match them? You stay positioned how they were for the very first time when they were pulled into line. If that first place person has had trouble controlling their calf and it's pushed them further forward, that's something that the judge will then pick up on that there has been a control issue with the calf. And I would recommend that that first place person has pulled around and repositioned their calf so they are in that initial position that they were in. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I think so. Um, we'll, uh, Clarissa, feel free to type in if there's more to it. Oh, uh, the next question. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Clarissa. No, that's, it's good, she answered it. Okay, perfect. 
The next question is, if you leave too much space between uh, your calf and the next one, can a judge put another calf in between? Yes, so you've had your first lineup and you've been pulled in, and if your spacing has not been left adequately, whether it's too tight or especially too much spacing, as this question is asking, that gives the judge a lot more opportunity, yes, to pull a competitor from below you up into that position when they're having that second line go around. You want to make sure you're being aggressive when you're pulled into that first line and showing your confidence. So that's why spacing is very important. Okay. Uh, Emma, you have your hand up. Do you have a question for Stephanie? Yes. Yeah, so like whenever it comes to spacing and someone's like smack right beside you, how do you get like, and like, and there's someone like right beside them really close? and it's just too close, and like no one's really able to move, how would you, like what would the judge do? So if you're pulled in line and that happens, Emma? Yeah. So the judge, when they're doing their inspection there, they will realize what calves have not come into position correctly, and that will be used when evaluating the placings. So if you're stuck between two calves, potentially you haven't left enough spacing between you and the calf ahead of you when you came into line. You cannot do anything about the calf that's below you. So I would suggest it's really important to make sure when you come into line you've left enough space. Now if a calf has acted up in line and pushed your calf over, if you're able to back your calf up and bring her back into line to try to give yourself a little more space if there is enough to do that. The judge will realize though if there has been a shuffle of calves most likely and take that into consideration. And if you're not able to back your calf up and get her repositioned, and if there's enough room to do so, you can do a figure eight. So a figure eight, you're gonna pull your calf out in front of the line and always remember that you're walking around your calf. You're gonna go back through your spot that you came out of, and then you're gonna reposition by walking back into line. Does that answer your question, Emma? Yes. Okay. Um, Steph, a few more questions. Um, we'll go with the second one first. If uh, when you are lining up and someone cuts in front of you um, and takes the place where you're supposed to be placed, what should you do? So if that happens to you, uh, mention to the person that has cut you off that you were pulled in ahead of them. But that's also the responsibility of the judge to realize the way that they have been pulled in to be placed. And that will get corrected when the judge does the second lineup or pulls out for the final walkabout. So that is, it's a tough position to be in. But just mention to the person that's gone ahead of you that you were pulled ahead and maybe they will let you go in ahead of them. But if they don't, just the judge will remember the way that the order that the competitors were pulled in and make the correction as needed. And the other question I have here, Stephanie, and I think you're just going to talk about this, this picture, but I'll give you the question. Um, it's in this picture, can you tell us who has the best position with their calf and angle? The boy in first looks a little sloppy. Yes, yeah, so in this picture, it's a great picture to use for a conversation piece. Um, we're definitely seeing some that are positioned very well. So in this photo, I would say the leads person with the jersey, uh, so in fourth, is positioned the most correctly. Uh, they're not grandstanding out in front of their calf. They have their arm bent at a very comfortable position so they can follow the judge with their head. And they've also left themselves enough space and that's why they're not standing out in front of the calf. If we look at the competitor in first, yes, the nose on the calf is a little too high. They're uh, not standing up nice and straight on both their legs. And I would say the halter's probably not fitted 100% on the calf. Then we go to the leads person in second and that, person has not left enough space between themselves and the leads person in first. So they've had to move out in front of their calf a little bit more to be able to follow the judge correctly. And if we look at the competitor in fourth, their feet are also 
positioned just a little bit back from the competitor in first. So if we wanted to make a suggestion, that competitor could move ahead ever so slightly to make sure they were in line with the first place cap. Any is, there a, is there a, the elbows on each of those competitors is at different levels. Which one is more preferable? So of these, the competitor in fourth has the most preferable. Uh, her elbow is in line with the calf's nose in this photo. The competitor in third is pretty close to being acceptable. But when we look at that, we see that the hand has the halter up in the calf's eye. So that's telling me that elbow's bent just a little too low for them to be comfortable with their calf. We look at the competitor in second, and that elbow is up way too high um, to be positioned correctly on the calf. The competitor in fifth, if they had a little more spacing in line, their elbow is also probably positioned correctly. Any other questions on lineup? So the, this is our initial lineup, we'll say. Then the judge is gonna come around and do an inspection and probably create a second line. Sometimes the second line is created by the judge just asking the competitors to move ahead a couple calf lengths so that they can reevaluate and then they will send you out for one final walkabout to go into that final line. So if that happens that you're going from one line ahead just a few feet to a second line, there will most likely be a ring person there to guide you of where you're supposed to stop. So you walk forwards going out of line and when you get to the back end of the first place calf that is in that new line, you're going to turn around just before you hit the back end and position your calf slowly moving backwards into line. Then if you move from that second line for a final walkabout into a final lineup, you're going to walk forwards until you hit the last place calf at the back end of the last place calf. Then you're going to turn around and go backwards to really show your calf off while the judge is looking for one final inspection. And when the judge motions for you to move ahead, then you turn and walk forward, still holding the halter in your left hand and your throat with your right into where the final lineup is. So any questions on that? So hearing none there, we're gonna discuss sportsmanship for a little bit. So sportsmanship is very important when we're in the ring at all times. We're all there competing or judging and wanting to have fun. But we want to make sure that we're looking out for one another. And as we mentioned earlier here in the presentation, if there is a calf that's balking and not wanting to move on the leads person that's in front of you when moving about the ring, it is okay to try to help to get that calf to move. Now, if you've tried a couple times and it's still not working, then that's okay to stop and hopefully the ring person will come over and help. It's also important at the end of the class, the judge is gonna come along and give you some pointers to help you for when you're at another show that you can work on at home. It's important to listen to those because the judge is just trying to help to help you improve to become a better show person. They're not there to criticize, they're just there to help. And it's important when the class is over to make sure that you're congratulating the competitors around you on a job well done. Because at the end of the day, in the 4-H program, a lot of these are going to be your friends too as you go through life. So yes, it's there for a competition, but when you're also friends at the same time and want to see everyone succeed. So sportsmanship is very important, whether it's a showmanship class or a confirmation class because we also are seeing one another outside of the ring. So any questions on sportsmanship? So Steph, uh, this is maybe a sportsmanship as well as a bit of a question back to the lineup. Um, when walking into the second lineup, how close should you get to the calf in front of you? That's a great question. So when we talked about spacing earlier and you said approximately a calf length or five feet, 
when we're doing our final walk around, you want to take that spacing and half it approximately. So you want approximately half a calf length or approximately two and a half to three feet. Because at this point, the judge is making their final inspection. And if there's a really close placing, you want to make sure that you're in the judge's eye when they're looking at the competitor in front of you. So that if you're a little bit closer, you're able to do that. However, I have seen it in some showmanship classes where a competitor is almost walking in front of the calf ahead of them. That's not okay. That's grandstanding and that's not being very sportsman towards the competitor in front of you. So just shorten the distance up a bit, half a calf length or approximately two and a half to three feet would be a good rule of thumb to use. And another question here, if the judge doesn't give you a reason or there isn't specific about a reasons for you uh, on what your placing was, what should you do? If you see the judge after the class, it would be okay to ask the judge if they remembered your class and what maybe a couple of pointers would be to help you as you're improving your showmanship skills and to help you for the next show. As a judge, I always love to chat with the competitors after the show as well. And sometimes you can have a little more in-depth conversation with them at that point. So as a competitor, if you see the judge, don't be afraid to ask. And if the judge doesn't remember, they will tell you that. But if they remember, I'm sure they'll give you a few pointers. So Steph, we have a question very specific to this year. Um, and, and not sure if there's an answer or just a chuckle out of it, but um, with quarantine going on, do you leave six feet uh, or still leave three feet? <laughs> That's a great question. Well, if we want to follow our protocols, it would be six feet. <laughs> So any other questions on sportsmanship or uh, lineup? Hearing none, we'll move on to if we're in a position where we have two judges in a ring. So at an achievement day, for example, you're most likely going to have just your official judge and maybe a ring person. At a regional show, you'll have an official judge. You potentially would have an assistant judge. And then at the TD Classic, you have an official judge and an assistant judge. So we'll see if this YouTube will work here, just to show an example, and then we can have some discussion on it. So here we're gonna see in a second that there is two judges working. There's both an official judge and an associate. So here you see that one judge is moving at the front of the line, and that's the official judge. So it'll be denoted at the beginning of the class who the official judge is and who the associate judge is. You're always gonna be wanting to watch the official judge and where they're moving about the ring. The associate will be standing, observing the class as well, as you see at standing behind the official judge. So you want to always follow the commands of the official judge that they're giving. When they're telling you to stop and start, the associate will never give you direction like that. You will see that the associate and the official judge will have conversation throughout the class, just to make sure that they're both on the same page and seeing the same thing. Because especially when you get into bigger classes, there's a lot to remember. So it's nice to have the associate there, just as a second set of eyes. But as a competitor, always remember it's what the official judge is telling you to do and they will be well denoted at the start of the class. So any questions on uh, if you're in a situation where there is two judges in the ring? So hearing none, we'll just move through to some general comments. So just as we start to wrap up the conversation here this evening, I want you to always remember that showmanship is about how you're presenting your cast. It doesn't matter the confirmation of your cast. 
you do want to ensure you're picking a cast that doesn't have a lot of faults because it will make showmanship a lot easier for you. But showmanship is all about you. You want to ensure that you're neat and tidy and professional looking and that your path is very clean. That's something that as a caretaker of your path, you're able to control keeping your path clean. You may not be the best fitter, but as long as you do your best, that's all that matters. But when it comes to a clean, presentable cast, that's something that everyone's able to do and can do very well. Remember to remain calm when you're entering the ring. I heard through the question and answer period earlier on here this evening, take a deep breath. That's very important to do if you get nervous easily, because if you're nervous, your calf is gonna sense that. And when your calf senses that, they're not gonna cooperate for you as well as if you're calm and relaxed. When you're preparing for the show, take a video of yourself, have someone take a video of you out leading your calf, doing an inspection, and that way you can look at yourself on the video and see what you're doing well and what you maybe need to improve on. And if you're not certain, don't be afraid to send that video to someone else and have someone else watch as you're practicing your cast and have someone give you some pointers back to you. I know I've always suggested that to 4-H members and I'm, I'm always happy. If you ever wanted to send a video to myself or another judge, they would be just as happy to give you some pointers before you go to your first show. And remember that the class is not over until you walk out of the ring. The class is ongoing all the time, so make sure you're being professional, controlling your calf to the best of your ability, making your calf look her best at all times, because you never know who's watching on the outside of the ring. And a comment that I've heard several times uh, from different competitors is what about size of calf? So my advice on size of calf is pick a calf that's gonna fit you correctly as you go through the year. Being fully aware sometimes at the start of the year, the calf is too small for you, but by, for example, your regional show or the Royal, that calf will be fitting you nicely. And if you're unsure of what age of calf to pick, a good, suggestion is look at a calf that's six months older than the calf you're looking at at that point in time. Are you going to be able to handle that calf? Are you going to be able to control that calf? And I've judged lots of shows where competitors do have big calves and do a really nice job with them, but a lot of that comes down to the temperament of the heifer. So my suggestion is if at all possible, try to get a calf that's correctly sized for you for later on in the year. So any questions? So a question stuff from one of our leaders. Um, will a good judge notice yellow staining on white calves or flaking and grayness on black calves? As a leader, I feel like this gets overlooked or missed a lot. Yeah, so the, the yellow staining on a calf, that's very noticeable. I know uh, the year actually that I judged at the classic, that was a discussion Claire and I had quite often. Um, that does get noticed, I think, by a lot of judges. And the flaking, uh, sometimes it is difficult to control that dry skin, uh, but using conditioner when at home as much as possible, which I know Callum spoke about earlier in your series, is important to try to avoid that. Uh, question, another question here. Um, would you fault a, a member for a large calf if they handle it well? It may be their best calf. If they can control the calf throughout the whole class, they can position themselves so they can see the judge easily, and everything goes smooth and accurately, I would not fault the person for having a big calf. Where I would fault though is if there is a lot of control issues throughout the class um, because the calf is pushy, maybe the temperament isn't ideal, uh, then I would fault. But if they've had complete control of that calf throughout the whole class, I would not fault them. Uh, 
Another question here for you, Steph. Um, what's the best way to practice um, on your own for and prepare for a showmanship class? So if you're at home on your own um, to practice, I suggest one, when you're starting to train your cat to walk in a straight line, if you can walk her beside whether it's a wooden fence or something to give her a bit of a guide, that's a good way to practice. The other thing is if you have a couple people at home, if you could get someone to walk ahead of you to pretend that they're a calf to help you with your spacing, then that's a good idea. As well as if there's someone behind walking, just to help you get a grasp where you're correct spacing. And if you're not able to get help with someone at home, don't be afraid to ask. Ask a friend, ask a 4-H leader if they can come over and give you a hand. I know uh, as I was growing up, going through the 4-H program, a lot of times I was practicing on my own. So I would use whether it was a fence for the guideline. I even would put pylons outside out sometimes to use that as a guideline for a ring and for my spacing and pretending that they were other calves. Anything that can help you just replace another calf so you can practice whether it's your spacing or moving about the ring would be a good idea. But there is lots of people that are willing to come and help on farm as well. If it's too late for stories, could you pull up one of these on Facebook? And I could just, or something like that, and I could just. Um, I'm not sure, Alexis, uh, uh, maybe try that question again if you were asking a question. Um, I have a few here. Maybe I'll go to one of them, and then Alexis will come back to you. Um, if you're showing a calf that is smaller earlier on the season, is there any adjustments that you could be making uh, with a smaller calf that you know is going to grow and sort of fit you by the end of the year? Adjustments in terms of your positioning with the calf? Yeah. So you will have to be very cautious that you're not getting the calf head too high if you're leading a calf that's smaller for you. So a lot of times you're not going to be able to get your elbow position. 100% as we talked about here this evening. So just mentally, it's making note that you need to make sure the nose on your calf is positioned in a downward position so that her head's not getting up too high. And I find when a competitor has a calf that's a little too small for them, it is that nose that gets up in the air uh, quite quickly. So that's a mental note to make when you're showing a smaller calf. How do you feel about the really glossy, almost greasy looking calves? Can it be too much for a showmanship class? Yes, I think in general, it can be too much, whether it's a showmanship or a confirmation class. Just making sure your calf comes in very nice and clean with a little bit of final blue or a little bit of baby oil, just lightly on her to make her stand out is all that she needs. She doesn't need so that if someone touches your calf, it's going to be all over your hands afterwards. Um, Steph, it seems that there is a certain area in the ring that your calf does not like. How should you handle that? Yep, that's definitely a big challenge. And I know uh, at the Classic, for example, there's a couple spots in the ring just because of lighting that calves don't like that area. So if there's a particular spot in the ring your calf does not like, sometimes just rubbing your hand on her neck a bit will help calm her down. If she's sidestepping in that area, turn her head whatever way her back end is going to try to keep her straight. And at the end of the day, it's trying your best not to get caught in that spot in particular for an individual inspection. So the main thing to remember is to stay calm and the judge will realize that there's maybe spots in the ring that calves in general aren't liking and will do their best not to look at you there or stop you uh, for your individual inspection. Every ring has, whether it's uh, shadows or different lighting that calves maybe just don't like as well. Um, do you think it's a good idea when you're training your calf to have someone make random noise or do random things around it to help calm your calf down. Absolutely, because when you take that calf off farm, uh, there's gonna be lots of new surroundings, lots of distractions. So the more at home that you can lead your calf in a different spot or have distractions going on, the better. That's just gonna help calm your calf down so that when she leaves 
her area of comfort at home, hopefully we'll, she will cooperate better. And then as a showmanship judge, um, if, a, if a cat flies down in the ring, from your perspective, how should a member handle that? Yep, so like uh, was mentioned a lot in your roll call, stay calm. Take that second and encourage your calf to get up. Your calf, sometimes you need to let go of the lead strap some so that she has enough lunge space. Give her a little poke and hopefully she'll get up at that point. Take a couple seconds and get her cleaned off as there's shavings or sand on her belly or her knees. And then keep your composure through it all. So the calmer you stay, that's gonna help you because after you get your calf up, she's most likely gonna cooperate and carry it on. If there's a ring person, and the calf is not getting up as quickly, they'll most likely come over and help you as well. And that's all part of when you're preparing uh, to lead your calf at a show. That's why it's important at home not just to spend five or 10 minutes leading the calf. If you think a class is gonna take half an hour, 45 minutes or an hour, it's good to lead your calf for that length of time at home before you go to the show so that they get used to being worked with for that period of time. Understanding when you get to bigger shows, sometimes your calf's out of the pack for two or three hours from the time of a heat to the finals in the class. And that is just a given and out of your control. But if you can control in your training, how long you work with your calf and letting her rest at the show before your showmanship class, that always helps as well. Okay. Um, Emma, I think you have a question. Yes, yeah, so like if they're really flaky and like you have to comb them out and put product in them, how do you make it like, like you want to put enough product in them that they don't look super flaky anymore, but whenever they are flaky and you put product in them, you don't want it to look like they're soaking wet. So how do you make it not look like they're soaking wet? If your calf has the dry skin that created the flakes, if you can give her a good brush first, and then just gently spray if you're wanting to spray some revive on her for conditioner um, and rubbing it with a towel afterwards is probably your best bet to keep that skin looking as best as you can. Um, a question for you, Steph. What makes a show person stand out? So a show person that stands out is a show person that enters the ring with confidence they're professional, and they're moving in unison and smoothly with their heifer at all times. And whenever the judge looks at that show person, they never get a bad look at either the show person position with the calf or the calf themselves. Because at the end of the day, as a judge, we're wanting to pick someone that we would want to lead one of our own animals. So the show person that stands out is that show person that keeps their calf looking their best all the time in a comfortable, calm, professional, confident manner. Any other questions before we let Steph give us some closing thoughts? Yeah, in, in the confirmation class, how do you make your calf stand out more? than other calves? So in confirmation, sometimes we talked earlier about our spacing rule. So of that approximate five feet, if you leave a good five feet or a little bit more, that'll help make your calf stand out. Or the other thing is just keeping your calf's head turned in towards you a little bit. That will help make her neck look longer as well. And keep her looking nice, long, and dairy to help make her stand out more. And as same rule applies as in showmanship, try not to get your heifer in confirmation caught in a corner so that she's potentially caught in behind other calves that the judge isn't able to get a good evaluation of her. So same rules and confirmation apply in showmanship as you're moving about the ring uh, to keep your heifer visible to the judge at all times so she can be evaluated correctly. All right, last chance for questions for our showmanship speaker.
I think you're good, stuff. Great. So I apologize that the YouTubes didn't work as I had planned with some examples, but I want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to your group. As I mentioned earlier, I think this was a great idea to do to keep the 4-H program going, everyone able to be interactive still. And remember with showmanship, at the end of the day, it's one show. If your calf's been in heat, your calf hasn't led as good as she normally does, remember there's always the next show that you're gonna go to. Remember to have fun too. Yes, we're there for a competition, but we're also there to have fun, meet new people, meet new friends that'll last forever. So remember, go into the ring, do the best job that you can do. And however the outcome is, it is. Take the advice from the judge, the pointers that they have given you, work on them for your next show, as we're all wanting to help make each person a better show person as they go through their 4-H career and on into leading in the open shows for themselves or other people as well. Because a lot of 4-H members end up showing calves for other people in the open shows too. So practice, practice, practice. The more time you put in at home with your calf, the most likely the better outcome you'll have when you're competing at the showmanship class. So just remember, do your best. And there is always another show if that show hasn't gone exactly as you have planned. And don't be afraid to ask questions of the judge after the show or of other showmanship judges, you know, as you're preparing to show at whether it's your teammate day, your regional show, or at the Royal, everyone's willing to help each other. So with that, I just want to say thank you again. And uh, a lot of you, I know quite a few of you. So if you ever have any questions, uh, don't be afraid to reach out. I'd be happy to help. Excellent. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, we have a few requests here to maybe watch uh, some of the some of the the classic when you were the judging. So we'll get that link from you and we'll share it out by email to everybody, and we can uh, folks can take another peek at it. Sure, I will uh, email that to you and Brianne. Jen. Perfect. Um, Christian, I'm looking for you. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. Uh, on, on behalf of everyone, I'd like to thank you, Stephanie, for uh, taking the time to show us, teach us about showmanship and everything you know. You're welcome, Christian. And good luck to everyone uh, as you go through your 4-H year. Not quite sure how this year is going to look exactly, uh, but hopefully you can get in a couple of shows and working with your cast. Excellent. So, Steph, we just need you to stop sharing your screen, sure. um, and then we have a few more things to do. You're welcome to stay with us, but you're also uh, welcome. I'm, I know how busy you are, so you're welcome to head out as well. Sure. Well, thank you again, and I may just sign off here uh, to get chores finished up. So, thanks, everyone, and good luck through this 4-H year, and uh, have a lot of fun, too. Excellent. <laughs>